going to my, my show, Lost in the Mouth, sp specific. Uh, I just love picking fucking hard titles to say. Uh, thank you very much for coming, because uh, this show has actually been played with controversy. Yes, get a beer and sit down, good man. <laughs> I am the kind of person you need to drink a lot through. Uh, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> that sounded <is> just... <laughs> That just sounded so disgusting, didn't it? No, really. <laughs> oh, already and I'm getting shit wrong. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thank you for coming, because this show has been plagued with problems. Uh, basically, um, when I did the show, it is a show about plans going wrong, and when I did it, when I toured it, plans went really wrong. Uh, in Adelaide, um, I was strangled by a busker. I know, usually they're the irritating cunts. Um, no, what happened was uh, he thought it would be erotic, and uh, <laughs> he just neglected to tell me. <laughs> and um, we were in his hotel room making out with each other and suddenly he just went for my neck and uh, he started squeezing hard and I, I went, oh, okay. Apple, pomegranate, banana. I thought, fuck it, I'll hit on his safe word at some point. <laughs> um, uh, Margaret Thatcher. And, um, <laughs> But, but no, so I just thought, fuck you. So I started strangling him. Uh, it, and we were just choking each other. And, um, and eventually he went, what are you doing? And I went, well, what are you doing? He said, I thought this would be erotic. I said, is it? He said, no. Um, <laughs> So that happened in Adelaide, because uh, all the things that went wrong went wrong with my throat and with my mouth. Um, because then when I went to Melbourne, um, I got hospitalised uh, with a throat abscess doing Lost in the Mouth specific. And uh, they took me into hospital and they had to cut my throat open going in via the mouth. And uh, it was quite nice because I made it into the news with Irony Hospitalises Comedian. <laughs> Thank you, Melbourne, so sympathetic. Um, I, I mean, I, I am a, a little bit concerned because uh, about, I mean, because I was going to originally call the show Magnificent, and uh, I just hate to think by now my pussy would have probably dropped out. <laughs> um, it's all right, the next show I'm just going to call it Money, Money, Money and Cock. Um, <laughs> Um, so yes, thank you very much. There were two plans basically that went completely wrong for me and I just want to share them with you and I, I, I hope you like them. One plan was that I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> yeah! Do we have any astronauts in? No, see, I'm glad I didn't because they have no social lives. Um, <laughs> And uh, the second thing I wanted to do was stand up for children, because uh, I like working with kids. Um, but unfortunately, um, I seem to tell slightly rude, naughty jokes um, that, that never really travel well to children, especially when you say, fuck shit and cunt. And, um, and they just ask you to explain it, and it's really, really dull. And you don't want, want to have to stop a set halfway through to go, well, well cunt is, it's, oh, God, Jesus, how long have you got? Um, <laughs> You can get cunted, uh, and nobody wants to know about the different forms of a verb or a noun. <laughs> For what I thought I was being educational. So, um, yes. So plan A was be an astronaut. Now this went wrong one day when I was uh, 17, um, and what happened was I went to um, school and I was studying um, maths, and uh, I was going to study physics. And uh, before I went to school, uh, I rang up my blind friend. I had a friend who was completely blind, and I rang her up, and I go, do you want to go into town? And she goes, ah, oh, yeah, I'd love to go into town, uh, but I can't because my dog's at the vet. And I said, oh, don't worry, I'll take you. And she said, ah, oh, thanks, but you're not qualified. <laughs> I was like, well, that, what do you mean? I said, you're kind of implying I'm less qualified than a dog. I mean, if a dog can operate you. <laughs> I'm sure I can, you know. She went, yeah, also when my dog takes me into town, people don't yell, oi, ginger. <laughs> and I thought, right, okay. Uh, I thought, well, I, I must listen to my friends, and then I thought, well, maybe I, I, I should change something about the situation. So I went uh, into town and I bought a can of black hairspray, non-toxic, and I thought, right, I'm just going to write the word slag on the side of her dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, no, I'm missing a 
trick. I'm missing a trick. So I wrote the word ginger instead. Because um, then people still shouted. Uh, and eventually she accused me of following her. Um, so I went into town and I was thinking, am I less qualified than a dog? You know, and I went to, I went to college and, and I, I sat through maths class. And then at the end of maths, my teacher pulled me aside and she went, Di, I think it's about time you let the maths boat sail on without you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> I just went, what? And she went, yeah, you see, that's the problem. Um, <laughs> I'll try and put this in a way that you can understand. The maths train is pulling into the station, but you don't have the fare to get a ticket. <laughs> And at the time, I went, oh, OK, miss, no problem, miss, I'll go do drama, miss. And uh, five years later, I was studying drama at university and I was washing up at my sink. And you know how, like, you have the memories of the past just bubble up and burst in your mind and you remember what people said to you and then with years of experience, you can understand what they actually meant. In the middle of my quiet kitchen, I just suddenly remembered that line and I just went, fucking bitch! <laughs> down and I'm going to wait until she's near death and um, <laughs> I know where she is uh, and I go to go up to her and I'm going to go hey hey Mrs Wood hi how's it going do you remember me I bet you don't well <laughs> something about a mass train yeah yeah well I've had a think and you know what the communication trout has picked up your line <laughs> hating gorilla is now going to key twat into your car. <laughs> I don't mind if you're angry at me for wanting to get revenge on an old person. I don't give a shit. Um, so, so after that, I then went home. So I'd been kicked out of maths and I'd been told I was less qualified than a dog. And I went home to um, see my dad. Now my dad is a bit of a joker. Anybody else's dad a bit of a joker? Yeah. yeah, mine is. I think all dads are. They all start off the same way. My dad started off when I was four and he grabbed my face and he went, oh, I've got your nose. And I was like, ah, oh, you kidding. You've missed my nostrils. But yeah, you've got my nose. Well, my dad graduated from that. When I was nine, my dad got my cat and put sellotape on my cat's paws. Then he put my cat on the windowsill and then he called me in so I could see my cat going. <laughs> and he went, oh, dinner is gone. We'll have to put him down. <laughs> Anybody else's dad like that? <laughs> oh, he's got better as I've taught him, you know, um, technology. I taught him how to text. Wish I hadn't. I sent him a text going, hey, dad, what are you doing tonight? He sent back, your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else's dad like that? <laughs> um, well, I went home and I think my dad already knew the problem because uh, I went home and I thought, right, start with the big picture because uh, I fucked up, okay, I've been kicked out of maths. And I just went up to him and I went, Dad, I want to work in space. And he said, oh, good, because I've got you a book on feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, I want to work in big, big space, that space, big space. And he went, oh, yeah, well. I'm sure you'll manage it. After all, in the 50s, the Russians sent a dog into space. <laughs> if a dog can get into space, I'm sure you can. Dog can't even do maths. <laughs> now, I, I admit that things didn't go well. And do you know what my, my friend, well, not my friends actually, no. Um, my sister says to me, um, the reason why your life doesn't work out, great way to start a conversation. Uh, the, the reason why your life doesn't work out is because you were an unplanned child. Oh. Wow. I don't mind that. No, I don't mind that. It's okay. You know, I was unplanned. Um, is anybody else here unplanned? You can admit it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Accidents of the world. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I mean, I think we're wondrous together. We're great, aren't we? I mean, you know, I came into my mother's life very quickly, which is how my dad must have come into her. <laughs>
<laughs> and I have a friend who, uh, who she reckons if she gets the birth of her child right, the rest of the child's life will magically follow. She seems to think if she gets the birth perfect, her child will never do no wrong. I, yes. Thank you, my heavily pregnant friend. I disagree. <laughs> And um, the thing is, my, my, my friend, she was like, oh, yeah, Di, you see, um, I'm going to get some uh, tea lights, yeah? And I'm going to create an air of tranquility, yeah? And uh, I'm not going to scream. I'm going to play some whale music. And uh, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit. And my baby, my baby's just going to slide. <laughs> just slide peacefully into the world. <laughs> I was like, honey, if your baby's going to slide out of your vagina, maybe you were too fucking rough when you made it. Um, <laughs> I got a text on the day going, come and witness the miracle of birth. <laughs> oh. um, I turned up and there were tea lights, right? The tea lights had set fire to the curtains. So that was the first problem. There was this black smoke in the room, right? And I walk in and all I can hear is this, eh, eh, eh. That's whale music, apparently. And I just, I, I get it with all this black smoke. And I walk in, and there, sat in a paddling pool, because she gets a special birthing pool, right? It's my friend sat with her newborn child bobbing around in all the turds she pushed out as well. I was like, so your baby slid out of, yes. <laughs> your baby slid out of your vagina into a pool full of turds, yeah. That's not a natural birth, that's the log flume. <laughs> Have you seen the bits that come out with a child? You don't just get a child, you get a second bit. And the second bit's got a fucking tail. I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm not having a child until they come in wireless. <laughs> oh. Do you know what, if I do get a child, I've already decided this. I don't want it to get big. I don't want it to get big. Uh, I just want a little one. Um, I'm not ruining my food. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, if I get pregnant ever, I'm just going to smoke, like, <laughs> 50 a day straight away. Um, I've heard it stunts them. Uh, so I just want, I'm sorry, I just want to pop out a small grey bean. Um, uh, a friend of mine, she goes, you can't do that. Your baby will be addicted to cigarettes. I'm like, yeah, if my baby tries to buy cigarettes, I think they might be asked for ID. Um, <laughs> with a wiener off them, you know? Um, but don't get me wrong, I think you should take care of your body. You should take care of your body, because um, I need to share something. Uh, I had a medical problem recently. Yeah. Yes, I will share, it's okay. <laughs> um, what happened was my, my belly button fell out. <laughs> I know, I went from an innie to an outie. It kind of went... Um, you see, what happened was, um, I went to visit, a, well, I have started dating someone, and um, he's rather large, and uh, the problem is, is that ladies need to do warm-up exercises before we jump on, and sadly, I didn't. Uh, I was so excited to see him, I basically ran on food first and impaled myself, and um, I'm he's very big, there's only so much space in my body and my belly button popped out and he triggered my gag reflex. <laughs> uh, in the dark it kind of sounded like ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. It was quite nice actually because we were um, we were fucking by a big uh, <laughs> let's just come out with it we were fucking by a big window, a big beautiful bay window. And, um, and as we were there, um, you know, uh, going away, um, <laughs> I don't know, guess where he was? I have no idea. With a mind this complete, fuck it. He could be there, he could be here, fuck it, maybe there's two of them, maybe I'm skiing, you know. Um, um, and they're skiing away, no. Uh, we were there pumping away and there was a big bay window and we were coming together work as a team you can achieve your dreams and um, and at the crucial moment we were both flying to the moon and um, suddenly the sky exploded in fireworks and it was amazing yes I know because everything exploded here everything exploded there and I just I burst into song I was like oh my god what is happening out there what's happening in here I am one with the world yes the singing put 
him off as well, it's fine. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, right, next time I have sex, I want to have fireworks at the end of it again. I need to recreate this. It was actually because it was November the 5th, which is, you know, Guy Fawkes night with all the fireworks. And you need to do it so you can see the fireworks if you ever try it yourself. Um, because if you're fucking, you can't see the fireworks. You might as well be fucking in Basra. Um, <laughs> so I thought, how can I bring fireworks into the bedroom, right? So I came up with two ideas. I'd like your opinion. Um, yes! Idea number one was sparklers, right? Yes? No, maybe? The problem is it is a naked flame. It is a naked flame. And the problem is the timing as well, because it's so short. So you're kind of, you're there going, well, I'm coming, are you coming? <laughs> is that, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> well, you better be coming quick, because I'm nearly fucking done, and you know how much that aches afterwards. <laughs> um, right, are you ready? Are you ready? Right. <laughs> Come now! Is that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not asking you to do something disgusting with it. I'm not saying, like, you know, <laughs> okay, psh, yeah, now pretend we're in Thailand. Go, go, go. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Fourth of July, soldier boy. No. <laughs> so I thought naked flames. You don't want naked flames. So then I came up with another idea. Now, this is a bit more sciencey. You know uh, those programs like CSI and, you know, those detective programs where they come into the hotel room, the crime scene, and they have, like, a hotel bed and they get out the ultraviolet light and they scan it over the bed. Yes! And all the semen glows in the dark. I thought, does it glow like that when it comes out fresh? <laughs> because if it does, I'm going to get one of those lights. <laughs> because you'd be like, it could be an effect of a firework, you know? You'd be like, oh, let me just do some mood lighting for you, darling. Click, click, warm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You could do a special effect. You'd be like, da 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 da, Catherine Wheel! <laughs> <laughs> We get on very well, like me and this guy, but um, <laughs> he does a couple of things that don't quite sit right with me. Like one thing he did, like we were there making out and it was nice. We were all like, you know. <laughs> yeah, now I thought I'm going to get sexy and put my leg around him. Oh, my hip. Um, <laughs> and then he did this. He went, kiss, 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 kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I thought, oh, yes, 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 yes. Off you go, bye, bye, have fun. And, um, <laughs> and then he came back up. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't what I was expecting. That wasn't what I was expecting. So I was like, okay, fine, we'll just carry on. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> and then he did it again. He went, kiss, 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 kiss. I was like, ah, you tease, you tease, <laughs> kiss, 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 bye, 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 go, go, go. And then he came back up again. Oh. I told this the other day and a man yelled out at the back of the room, now you know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife went, does she? <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the third time, I, I just, I remember what I've seen in the porn films, you see. So, so he went, kiss, 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 kiss. And I just thought, I know, I'll just help him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is basically known in porn films as the cafetiere. <laughs> so uh, he was down there for a while. I think he thought I was trying to drown him, to be honest with you. <laughs> we, um... <laughs> We were doing quite well, and then, you see, the problem is, is that he, um, I'm a lady who likes to strum to my own rhythm. <laughs> Has that just sailed over the heads of some of the girls in the room? Are some of the girls in the room going, we can do that? Um, yeah, totally, abandon that fucking dishwasher, man. It's no good once you learn yourself. Um, I sometimes feel like, like, when I say this in public, like, and people look at me as if to go, Female wanking, really. Uh, please don't continue. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like the Emily 
Emily Pankhurst of female masturbation. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm leading the way. Except instead of like being chained to like the prime minister's office or some shit, I'm just like chained to my bed going, please, somebody, for fuck's sake, can somebody just move the mouse, okay? Because I can't reach in the fucking screensavers. Come on, I'm, I'm nearly done. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, but he, uh, he unlocked the magic code, right? Yeah. And I flew to the moon. Great. But then he got smug. <laughs> I have never seen that before. He did that. I went, ah. And then I was like, ah. Oh. And then he goes like this. He goes, yep. <laughs> <sighs> I was like, ooh, why reheat a fish finger? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. I thought, what does he want? Uh, I just want to go to sleep. And, um, <laughs> and he goes, you can say it. And so I just took a punt. I thought, I'll just be silly. And I just said, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, that was what he wanted. He wanted me to say thank you for my orgasm. I felt like saying, yes. <laughs> Thank you for helping me achieve something I could have done in, ooh, half the fucking time? <laughs> You've been sawing me in half for 40 fucking minutes? It's like, Jesus Christ, if you want to impress me, go into the kitchen. There are so many jars I can't open. <laughs> We've gone off topic. Right, plan two. I want to do stand-up for children. <laughs> Originally, uh, when I went to university, uh, I um, did drama. So when I came out, I was qualified for fucking nothing. Um, <laughs> and uh, what I did was I uh, got a job in a place called Screw Fix Direct. <laughs> it sounds like a whorehouse, doesn't it? It sounds like a prostitute hotline. Um, and basically, ho um, Screw Whorehouse Direct, I was going to call it. Screw Fix Direct is in Somerset, and we're not very culturally diverse in Somerset. <laughs> Uh, basically, I was a minority, and um, <laughs> I made friends with the other minorities. So I was friends with the only, uh, the only black woman, and I was friends with the only gay guy. Um, yeah, and so we were kind of a little team, and we were constantly on the lookout for a Jew. Um, <laughs> we really wanted one in a wheelchair. And then... <laughs> And one day, my gay friend said to me, he goes, I dare you to go and mingle with the locals. And I said, fuck you, I will. And he goes, you see that one over there? And I went, ugh, she's disgustingly rough. And he goes, yeah, go ask her about her secret tattoo. And I went, OK. Now, I was walking up to this woman, and she looked rough as fuck, right? She, had, she just had tattoo, 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 everywhere, right? And, um, and as I approached her, she was giving some kind of, I don't know, speech. She was there going, Roy, they put fucking security cameras in the fucking warehouse, Roy, and so they can look at my fucking asshole. Oh, yeah? Look at my fucking asshole, you bastards! And I thought, oh, shit, I'm going to die. Um, and I thought, no, I've done drama. I'll just pretend to be one of the gang. Um, so I did what you always do when approaching a gang in dramatic terms. I went, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> you right? And um, I spoke her language. And um, she goes, I know your sister. Now, I have a sister. She did not work at Screwfix Direct. And I said, really? How, how do you know her? And she goes, she works on the packing line. And I looked over to the woman she was pointing at, and I thought, do I now tell this woman that not all ginger people are related? <laughs> yeah, no. So um, I, I, I just went, I heard you've got a tattoo somewhere, a secret one. And she went, yeah, I got a tattoo on my lip. And I thought, oh, fuck me, she's going to drop her shorts. I know it, she's just going to drop her shorts and pull out one of her fanny lips and go, yeah, look at it, it's a, it's a dolphin on a motorbike with a skull for a face. <laughs> I'd be like, how beautiful, it smells like the docks. Um, <laughs> and then um, instead she goes, she goes, yeah, I do, right? And she went, <laughs> and there, written on the wet bit, the wet bit was, fuck off. Just written on her face. And I just went, charming. So 
why, why have you got this there? And she went, right, it's because I got fed up of blokes chatting me up, right? So I decided, <laughs> right, now when they go, uh, yeah, do you want to have a shag or something? I could go, oi, dickhead, read my lips. <laughs> I thought that was quite nice. <laughs> but I didn't work there for long. Uh, <laughs> And um, thankfully, I became a drama teacher. Now, um, I did love teaching drama. I made one mistake as a drama teacher. Well, I made a couple. Um, one of the mistakes I made was that I cast a child with epilepsy. When we, with, that's the genie in Aladdin. Uh, we were doing a pantomime. And um, you need somebody to play the genie. But the problem was, I didn't check his medical records. And I just went, yes, Malcolm. And um, yeah, I didn't know that he was prone to that. And um, what happened was we had special effects. And um, I was so excited because I had a budget. And um, so I bought like, you know, um, a smoke machine and a strobe light. And, um, <laughs> and then when it said, enter the genie, I was like, yay, click. And, uh, and the smoke cleared and little Malcolm was just... <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I was like, we've reached Spaz Factor 5, Captain. <laughs> um, but it's okay because he really wanted to do it. So we gave him a little crash helmet and we disguised it as his turban. <laughs> um, I, I also uh, discovered being a teacher um, kind of what a small town I was teaching in um, because, um, you know, um, I kept seeing the same faces round and round again. Like, uh, in the morning, I had the morning off from teaching to uh, have something quite invasive done. And now I say it, my biology teacher was deaf. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Diane, you'll go far. Yes, thanks, miss, I will. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and what happened was, so we, I had that done in the morning, female doctor and everything, which is nice. Um, and then in the evening of the same day, we had parents' evening. And I was sat at my little desk and in walked my female doctor because I taught her child. And she sat right fucking opposite me. And we're just looking at each other. And I'm just like, oh my God, earlier today you saw my pervix. And uh, you know I haven't shaved. Ooh. I was just like, we're just going to have to break the ice. I was like, oh, well, now let's evaluate what came out of your vagina. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I didn't want to be a teacher for long. Um, it didn't suit me. And um, what happened was, I, 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 I was in New Zealand at the time and I decided I wanted to do stand-up for children. And so I thought, right, I want to be a stand-up. I want to do stand-up for kids. I will go back to the UK and I will do stand-up for children. Hooray. Um, and I rang this company and this company said, hi, yeah, you, we do stand-up for kids, but we need you to just do five minutes of clean material. <laughs> Thank you for your laugh of hope. <laughs> five minutes of clean material just to prove you can, you can be clean in front of the children. And I said, oh, that's easy, that's fine, I can do it. I've got five minutes, just. And, um, and they said, yeah, all the children's spots are full. Um, we need you to do a gig in front of our other group for clean comedy, the Military and Naval Pensioners Club. <laughs> I said, no problem, I, I can do it. And then they said, you have to do it on this date. It's the only one we've got left. That was the date I landed in the UK from the 28-hour flight in the air. And I thought, you know what? And I never was an astronaut. Now all I do is get high. So instead, I will make this plan work. I will be a stand-up. I will do stand-up for children, right? So I said, yes, I can do it. Now, the first thing I thought, I thought, right, I was ill before I was due to fly. And, um, and, and I, but I, I was trying to like write through the illness. I was like, I'm sure I could come up with jokes that would work with children and with military and <laughs> naval pensioners. <laughs> I'm sure that somehow those two de demographics can mix. And I was thinking, they must have things in common, you know? And I was thinking, well, we have two groups here who both get cheap bus fares. <laughs> I was like, we have two groups who both think that their music is the better music. 
I was like, and then I thought, oh, we have two groups who wear or used to wear uniforms that normal people like to fuck in. <laughs> Good start. I thought, I'll work back to the clean shit. And um, now, bef bef before I uh, flew, I, w I was ill, right? I was ill. And so I thought, right, I need to go to the doctor and I need to sort this out. And I was practicing being clean. And I thought, this is an ideal time to practice being clean in front of the doctor. So I went to the doctor and the doctor went, what's wrong? Now, I have to tell you what was wrong. I had... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry, there's no easy way of putting it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was splattering the ceilings. Um, so, sorry. Um, and I was thinking of all these ways I could maybe express that to the doctor in a clean manner. And I was kind of going, I was thinking of all these weird little sentences like, oh, doctor, um, I wish to wear a brown gown to the Turdsville ball, but my dress keeps falling apart. <laughs> Or, Doctor, it is a hot day and there are many brown kittens on my water slide. <laughs> In the end, I kind of went there and I went up to the doctor and I was just like, hi, hi. And she goes, what's wrong? And I just went, uh, 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 and I kind of went, you know that bit? in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> where they have a big chocolate waterfall, I'm doing a tribute act. <laughs> Occasionally I get a fat kid, but... <laughs> Most of the time it's just the waterfall. <laughs> and, and she went, Right, and she goes, okay, well, here's some powder, take this, and you'll be okay, because I said, I need to be okay for this big flight I'm doing. And she said, yes, take this powder and you'll be fine. And I said, well, what does it do? And she goes, oh, it just creates a small, inorganic egg that kind of rolls around your stomach and helps with the peristalsis. Now, I think we've already established I'm quite slow. Um, <laughs> I need to learn one word at a time, right? You can't give me a big word like peristalsis. I don't know it. Uh, I am like a mobile phone in that respect. You know when you know the word, you can't spell the word. And you want to write a big word to your friend. You want to go, ha, you are oblivious to this. And your phone goes, you are obvious. And you go, no, oblivious. And your phone goes, obslifer? <laughs> and you go, that's not even a word. Why would you give me not even a word rather than the word? Give me the word. And then the phone goes, spell it. And I go, I can't. We're at a stalemate. Um, I, that, I've turned that into a little game that I play with uh, my granny when she gets a little bit uh, racist at Christmas. Because um, she'll kind of sit there and she'll go, um, you know who I blame? <laughs> I don't even know what we're blaming for, but go on. You know what I blame? Immigrants. And I'll go, you blame ice cream? <laughs> she'll go, immigrants. I'll go, imagination? <laughs> immigrants. Igloos? <laughs> She'll go, fuck off, you little ginger bitch. <laughs> and that's me three, nanny, nil. Um, so I kind of said to the doctor, I said, per, 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 per. what? She goes, peristalsis. And I went, paralysis? Are you going to paralyze me? And she went, no, 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 per peristalsis. And I went, I'm going to piss? I'm gonna, you're going to make me piss shit? That's what I'm doing now. And she's like, no, no. Um, and then I heard the maths train approaching. And she went, no, Diane. Let's see. You know that bit in Indiana Jones where the boulder rolls through the temple and Indiana Jones gets out the other side, doesn't he? Because the boulder forces him out. I said, yeah, I can kind of see what you're talking about. She went, OK, it's a bit more like Indiana Jones too, actually. This powder will stop all the brown kids running through your temple. <laughs> powder and I thought right okay I have my magic powder I'm gonna fly on a, a plane for 28 hours and then I'm going to entertain the children sorted done great and uh, uh, I was fine because the first 12 hours I slept wondrous now the sec now when I got into Hong Kong that was the problem that was where it started uh, because I was there queuing up and I don't know if you've been to Hong Kong Airport but they uh, at the time were as worried about bird flu 
um, as they are about terrorism and bombings and stuff, uh, you know, exploding suitcases. They are equal pegging in Hong Kong. Basically, if you want to create some kind of international um, stir, just sneeze on a handbag and leave it unattended. Um, <laughs> And I was queuing up in biosecurity and there were these signs everywhere going, do not cough or sneeze. If you cough or sneeze, you will be detained for 28 hours. Yes, while well, they clean out your ears and poke up your bum and do whatever they need to do to, to determine if you're ill. So I was like, right, so must not sneeze. But the woman in front of me had been in duty free. And she had, yes, yes, she had read sample as an instruction. Uh, not an offer. <laughs> and uh, she'd sampled every, everything. And I was sort of behind this woman who smelled of Calvin Klein's piss. <laughs> and I was sort of... <sighs> I thought, I'm, I'm actually going to fucking sneeze. Don't sneeze, do not sneeze. I'm like... <sighs> <laughs> and I thought, fuck it, I need to sneeze. I thought, no, and I just went... <clears throat> now, the force of stopping a sneeze went down my ill body. I did catch him, but it kind of went phew, ah, phew, like that. You don't know you can breathe in through your arsehole till you try. I was literally like phew, ah, phew. It, it, it did touch the air. Um, for the more delicate among you, just imagine a turtle doing an impression of a cuckoo clock. <laughs> security went <laughs> and I thought oh no oh, no 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 <sighs> yes <laughs> then he went passport and boarding card did you just sneeze and I went no I nearly just shit myself <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think basically, I, th I think it was the food on the plane. I had a lamb biryani. It was nice, but you know. Um, and then he goes, he looks at my, uh, my boarding card and he looks at my occupation and he goes, oh, you comedian. And I went, yeah. And he goes, oh, so you comedian like Jerry Seinfeld? Like, oh, what is the deal with airline food? And now you just shit yourself. That is hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> isn't it just? Um, <laughs> But I couldn't help thinking, as I was walking down the gantry, uh, like this, by the way, um, I couldn't help thinking, so let me get this straight. If I sneeze, I'm detained for 28 hours. But if I shit my pants, please get back on the plane. Get back in the airtight plane. The airtight plane with 554 other people for whom oxygen masks will not fall from the overhead locker. <laughs> that I am not going to New Zealand. I mean, like, if I turned up in New Zealand with, like, poop in my knickers, they'd be like, oh, you're trying to import nuts and seeds. <laughs> I'd be like, they've been processed. Um, so I sat back on the plane and I thought, right, OK, I must write clean comedy. <laughs> I don't know how this works. And, um, <laughs> and then I thought, I'll watch a film. So I started watching a film, and then about 20 minutes in, it skipped. I'm like, oh, what? And I just, I rewound it, and it went, Poof. I thought, fuck you. <laughs> Bing! And this woman comes along, and she went, hello! And I'm like, ah! <laughs> um, I'm so sorry to bother you, but uh, my film has skipped. Could you check the disc or something? And she went, oh, well, which film is it? And, and what's, what, roughly what scene, you know? And I went, well, the film is Knowing with Nicolas Cage. Don't know if any of you have seen it. Uh, but uh, the bit that's missing, I've been following the plot, and round about now there should be a big, massive Hollywood plane crash. Uh -huh. Yes. I asked this question at 35,000 feet. <laughs> and the air stewardess went into panic mode and just went, oh, we've edited your film. <laughs> and I went, what? And she went, we've edited your film so it doesn't put you off flying. <laughs> and I thought, tell a joke, make a friend. So I went, <laughs> well, if you didn't want to put me off flying, you shouldn't have let half these ugly fuckers back on the plane. 
I mean, uh, I'm talking loudly at this point. Yes. And I'm going, I mean, Jesus Christ, I've been wanting to strangle the kid in 36G, and he's too fat. I mean, for fuck's sake, if this plane bursts into flames and we all plummet towards concrete, you haven't got to be worried I'm going to be scared or paranoid. You've got to be worried I might start wanking off to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was moved. Uh, I was moved to the back of the plane for disturbing people. And uh, while I was sat at the back, I thought, I feel really bad. I thought, I feel so bad because I'm supposed to make people's lives happy. And I've just upset about, ooh, 16 people in a plane. And I just thought, I, I need to make a friend. I need to, to kind of, you know, save myself. And then at that point, there was a woman sat next to me. And I went, hello. And she went, ah, ah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just don't like flying, I don't like flying. It makes me very nervous. I always think I'm going to lose things. And I thought, tell a joke, make a friend. And, um, and so I went, you're scared of losing things? And she goes, yes, I'm scared of losing mainly like my passport. And I went, ha, well, if you're scared of losing things, you should put your passport in your vagina, because I've heard a black box survives any crash. <laughs> I then had to explain what a black box was. And when she found out, bing, no, please don't, hello, and, and they couldn't move me anywhere else. <laughs> I was kind of stuck with the woman who hated me, so I had no one to talk to, and I felt really sad. So I thought, do you know what? I think they had the right idea with the film. If you don't like something, edit it. So I thought, I know how I can edit the plane. I'll get plastered. And uh, <laughs> you'd get free drinks. So I ordered a Singapore sling, and another, and another, and another. And by the time I landed, I was fucked. And, um, and I thought, right, uh, I'll go do this gig uh, with the children, uh, the old people, and then I'll go home to sleep. And uh, when I turned up at the gig, I was in a disgusting state. Bear in mind, I've been awake for the last, you know, at least 14, 15 hours. Been wearing the same pants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a total rainforest thing going on down there. And um, I had, like, wet, sweat armpits. Do you know what I mean? Where, like, you're, you're wet and it doesn't dry. No matter how much you do this, you're like, why isn't it drying? I don't know. Sweat usually goes by now. Um, it, I was really disgusting and I was drunk and a little bit stinky. And uh, I had pain in my shoulder. And I walked in. And for the first time, I saw my audience. And I suddenly realised, I've written clean comedy for the wrong group. I suddenly thought, shit, I really have written a load of jokes for one demographic. I've written it for the demographic who don't like authority. That's the key thing. Uh, apart from, well, authority is probably the name of a girl in year eight who's into hip hop, you know? <laughs> I'm authority, yeah, and I'm pregnant, but if you tell anyone, I'll cut you. Like. <laughs> I like those kids. They're the ones I've written for. I've not written for these old people. I've not written for these old war veterans in their wheelchairs with their jackets on. I've not written for them. It's like the only reason why these people think outside the box is because we haven't shut the coffin lid yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, right, I better rewrite. And I think I'm too pissed to rewrite. So I kind of there going through my day going, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And, and then I've got like half an hour before I have to go on. And I think, okay, right, I'll go to the loo, I'll be fine. I go to the ladies, they're, they're all busy. So I go downstairs into the disabled toilet and I shut the door. Now I am so glad I was in the disabled toilet. Because um, have you ever needed a bar to hang on to? Because what you're trying to force out of your body is so fucking large, you need to steady yourself against the fucking building. Anybody? No? Yeah. Well, I do. Because, uh, you know that bit in Indiana Jones? Uh, you know that bit where the boulder rolls through the temple? Yeah? I think if you remember correctly, Doctor, yeah? Um, Indiana Jones got out. Yeah, Indiana Jones was fine. But the boulder doesn't, does it, Doctor? The boulder doesn't get out the temple door because the boulder's about this big and the temple door, well, in my case, is about, oh, I don't know, this big. I've only ever seen it in a mirror. <laughs> and I was like, hey, okay, okay, this is very unusual, but we'll just hang in there. Five minutes in, my pulse went up. I went bright red in the face. I, I started sweating. I thought, okay, okay, just, there uh, we go. Ten minutes in, I had the poo anchor. Do you know what I mean? The poo anchor. Half of it was out. I'm now plugged into the toilet. I'm there for the rest of the duration. I cannot move. I'm like, right, okay. But at this point, my leg goes numb. I'm like, fat no! Wake up, for fuck's sake! I, then I start getting shooting pains in my gut. I start to feel nauseous and sick. Fifteen minutes in, I'm actually going to be fucking sick. And I can't be sick in the sink because it's the fucking day.
disabled toilet and the sink's over there. And I just think, well, I either just sit on the floor or I just spread my legs and go like that. So I think, fuck, I've got to get on stage. So I think I've got to just, fuck, I'll try to saw it in half. I'll saw it in half with my asshole. Maybe that'll work, right? And it's just not going, and it's like, am I giving birth to a fucking triangle or something? What is this thing? 20 minutes in, it falls out. I think it was about eight pounds. And the problem is, I didn't want to wipe straight away because that muscle does not retract, right? And I was scared that if I put my hand behind and I wiped, I'd lose my hand up my asshole and I'd somehow be like some weird puppet, do you know what I mean? I dabbed and then I pulled up my pants. I was wearing little knickers that day. I was wearing a little thong. If you'd have seen me naked, you'd have thought, oh, guitar with only one string. <laughs> Shows her there like this. <laughs> clean comedy, clean comedy, clean comedy. Just done the biggest shit of my life. Clean comedy, clean comedy. <laughs> and just as I was waiting to go on, there was a mirror, because it was in an old theatre. And uh, I caught sight of myself in the mirror. Not only was my face red, I was covered in sweat, but I had blood <laughs> running out of my nose <laughs> and down. Because it had mingled in with the sweat and the tears. And uh, I was wearing a top and it was starting to drip. And I was like, fuck, I've got blood, uh, shit, bollocks. What kind of design flaw is this, Jesus? And I just thought, you know what, fuck it. Uh, war veterans, I'll make it look like a poppy. <laughs> Perfect. And then I heard, please welcome to the stage. Now, I want to just recreate the gig for you. Uh, I'm going to play a couple of parts. I'm going to play me and my heckler. And uh, <laughs> I would like you to be uh, the audience, obviously. I think you're very good at that. I'm sure you'll suffice. So, uh, are you ready? You're going to be the old people at the gig. <laughs> right. So, for our next act, we've got a new up-and-coming comedian. Please welcome to the stage, Diane Spencer. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here at the Military and Naval Pensioners Club. Man, this looks dull for a gay disco. <laughs> I've been told to do clean comedy like my gran's in the audience, though to be fair, if my granny were in the audience, she'd be in an ashtray. <laughs> at this point, the heckler pipes up. Oi! Are you like Diane Spencer? Like Princess Di? Yes. Have you got any material on her then? What, like a shroud? <laughs> I was proud of myself. That was off the cuff. Do you know what I mean? They didn't like it at all. And so I thought, and I, I suddenly, like my brain went, I've got an idea. Just dump it. Dump the clean shit. It's obviously rubbish joking because you've never done it before. Just do the stuff that works. So I went, so anyway, Shakespeare and Queen Elizabeth I are making out. And Shakespeare's yanking on the Queen's tits like she's a fucking milking machine. <laughs> and the Queen's there going, yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, Shakespeare goes, come on, Liz, let's fuck. And uh, the Queen goes, oh, we can't. And Shakespeare goes, why not? And the Queen goes, it's the middle of the Elizabethan period. <laughs> but then Shakespeare's too excited, so he rips open his codpiece and his cock pops out. And he shoots milky bullets of Shakespearean love all up the Queen's dress. And the Queen looks down and goes, what the fuck is that? And Shakespeare goes, it's a Midsummer Night's Cream. <laughs> the whole joke's terrible because uh, when you look at the timeline of Queen Elizabeth I and Shakespeare, the Queen did come first. Thank you and good night. <laughs> now, I'd like to say I went thank you and good night. I didn't. Uh, what happened was uh, they sent on a bouncer to escort me off. Oh. Uh, I know, and he chose to drag me by the head. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, now, do you think I got to do clean comedy for the kids? No. You're correct, I didn't. It wasn't a trick question. Um, they hated me. Um, but a couple of things came out of that, and so, you know, when plans go wrong, please always look on the bright side, because, number one, if I had done clean comedy for kids, I wouldn't have been able to share a lovely evening with you people here, because I would be off entertaining some fucking... I fucking hate kids. <laughs> I really, no, I'm sorry. Do you, know what I, do you know what I really hate? Because I used to 
teach the older kids. I don't like the little ones. And they're the ones they make you do comedy for. The little ones who kind of go, oh, tell me that um, I'm a princess and that um, there are unicorns and that I, I'm a fairy and all of this and I'm special. And it's like, do you know what, Poppet? <laughs> I'd love to tell you all that, but I know for a fact that in 11 years' time, I'm going to come out of a pub pissed and see you being fingered behind a skip. <laughs> I'm suited. Um, <laughs> uh, well, that's fine. Yes, so we're going to be able to do comedy for you, lovely people. And uh, also, um, oh, yes, they got in trouble, which I felt really good for. The venue got in trouble. Um, and not because of what you'd think. Uh, I mean, you'd think they got in trouble for me because people complained. No, apparently, I was a highlight. Um, no, what happened was... Uh, People complained because um, all of their, their um, punters were in wheelchairs and somebody had vandalised the disabled toilet. <laughs> I mean, basically, it looked like I tried to drown a small dog in it. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't flush that thing. I fucking tried. Um, it was just like, shh, oh, erosion. Um, I tried to get it with a stick as well. I got a little stick and I was like, hey! in the stone. Great! Um, it, it just wasn't fucking moving. Um, and <laughs> and um, the other thing that uh, um, is that I've got a new plan out of it. Um, and my new plan is going to be much more successful. Um, and basically it's because when I was on that um, set, uh, another comedian wanted to find out why the disabled toilet was out of action. And he went in and he saw what he saw and he took a photograph. <laughs> and then he took this photograph, I think he was impressed, and um, he blew it up to massive proportions, like you needed to. And, um, and I found out subsequently that he's been going around the London circuit where I work with this photograph going, what could have created this? He's got 10 minutes of jokes on it, just going, what made this? I thought all the dinosaurs were dead. And my next plan, ladies and gentlemen, which is going to go right, is that I'm going to hunt that fucker down and I'm going to invoice him because he's making a living from using my material. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of my show, Lost in the Math Specific. Thank you very much for coming. Good night. <laughs>